turned out, Nate wasn't the only plant-based fighter out there. I stopped eating meat probably like around the end of 2012. I grew up not even knowing about half of these other vegetables. Asparagus to me just came out like five years ago. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, as a kid, it was like, asparagus. We never see that. I'm like, what's that? Bryant Jennings is a heavyweight title contender, best known for going the distance with Vladimir Klitschko, one of the greatest boxing champions of all time. My early years growing up in Philly, the only thing we knew was spinach in the can, collard greens, and Popeyes, KFC, made by frying chicken. Most people say, oh, where do you get your protein? As if everybody that's in KFC is looking at the back of a bucket, like, yeah, how much protein is, y'all don't know. So y'all don't, y'all really don't know what y'all eating. I'd never really thought about it like that before. What else was in the food I was eating? An experiment to help answer that question was being conducted by Dr. Robert Vogel, co-chair of the NFL's subcommittee on cardiovascular health. What you eat immediately before an athletic endeavor really can have major impact on how you perform. There's a direct correlation between a meal and endothelial function. The endothelium is the lining of blood vessels. It regulates blood flow throughout the body. It knows that a particular muscle group or organ needs more blood flow, and it dilates, it opens up. When the endothelium is impaired, it cannot open up. It cannot allow blood flow to increase as much, and therefore impairs athletic performance. The test subjects were three football players from the Miami Dolphins. Defensive back Michael Thomas, and wide receivers Griff Whalen and Kenny Stills. For the touchdown, Kenny Stills! Today, we're going to be feeding them three burrito breakfasts with a lot of protein. Two of them have sources of animal-based protein and fat. One is from beef, one is from chicken. Third is a plant-based burrito, which has beans in it. So the protein and the fat came from a plant-based source. Tomorrow, we're going to feed them all bean burritos. We're looking at the impact of eating a different meal on the same people. All right, here's the beef. Thank you. Chicken here. I'm going to have a plant-based one here as well. Thank you. Griff has been plant-based for four years, so he got bean burritos on both days. On away games, we always eat fried chicken. We eat Popeyes. I love fried chicken. I love Popeyes. And I'm going to eat Popeyes every time. <laughs> Two hours after each meal, the players had their blood drawn and put into a centrifuge. The red blood cells sink to the bottom. An amber-colored fluid called plasma rises to the top. If the plasma is see-through, it means there's not much fat in the blood, and the endothelium is likely functioning well. Michael, today's blood and yesterday's blood. This is a plant burrito. This is a meat burrito. Look at the difference it makes in what circulates in your bloodstream. Cloudy. Cloudy. And that's on top is the fat circulating in your blood from the meat burrito. Gotcha. Griff, you're the vegan. Here's your blood from today and your blood from yesterday. Nice and clear, both of them. So the fat from the avocado doesn't have that kind of effect. That's right. Kenny, you're the fried chicken guy. <laughs> you want to see your chicken? There it is. Yeah, it's pretty gross to see. <laughs> Sources of animal-based protein and fat have a tremendous impact on endothelial function that lasts for six or seven hours after you eat. So if you have bacon and eggs for breakfast, or a hamburger for lunch, and a steak for dinner, this is going on all day long. Your blood is always cloudy, and the ability to operate at your best is always impaired. Damn. I guess I won't be eating my fried chicken no more. Dr. Vogel's experiment was backed up by numerous studies measuring how a single animal-based meal can impair blood flow. I also found a large body of research showing that plants have the opposite effect, improving endothelial function and increasing blood flow. Controlled studies show that simply drinking beet juice before training allows subjects to cycle 22% longer and bench press 19% more total weight. I've seen races where it has come down to the 1,000th of a second. 
sometimes you have to do things that you know your competitors aren't doing, getting every single advantage you can. Knowing I could get enough energy and protein was one thing, but seeing what a single animal-based meal could do to an athlete's blood sealed the deal. It was time to give this plant-based thing a try, but there was only one meat-free meal I could think of. Hi, what can I get for you today? Could I get two bean burritos, please? Bean or beef? Bean. All right, I'll see you at the window, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. When I went plant-based, I thought that it would be a longer transition, but I just immediately started feeling like I could go kick ass and not need the recovery in between. It was mind-blowing to my teammates. They were tired of me saying, like, let's go again and again. Recovery is the most essential. But which package is your protein coming in is the better question to answer. The plant-based protein versus the animal protein, which package is going to help the body overcome inflammation and help the body to recover? In animal products, you're getting protein packaged with inflammatory molecules like new 5 gc endotoxins, and heme iron. When we consume animal products, it also changes the microbiome, the bacteria that live in our gut. And the bacterial species that have been shown to promote inflammation overgrow and begin to produce inflammatory mediators like TMAO. The study that showed that a single hamburger impairs blood flow also showed that it can increase measures of inflammation by 70%. In the arteries, inflammation reduces blood flow. In muscles and joints, it can increase soreness and delay recovery. In plant-based protein, you're getting protein that's packaged with antioxidants, phytochemicals, minerals, and vitamins that are gonna reduce inflammation, optimize the microbiome, optimize blood supply, and optimize your body's performance. The antioxidants Dr. Stoll was talking about are found almost entirely in plants, which have, on average, 64 times the antioxidant content of animal foods. Even iceberg lettuce has more antioxidants than salmon or eggs. As a result, switching to a plant-based diet can help reduce measures of inflammation by 29% in just three weeks. I was about ready to retire as I should have been because I'm like 35 at that time, but I just kept getting better. And so they had to take me to the Olympics. <laughs> we were complete underdogs as Team USA in our semifinal ride against Australia. We were down by 1.7 seconds. No one's ever come back in team pursuit from a deficit that large. And we beat them on the line by eight one hundredths of a second.